What is up guys? My name is Lex. Today we're playing 102550 at the Hard Rock in Florida. I buy in for $8,000, so it is a little bit bigger than my normal $5,000 buy-in. Let's get into the first hand. I've got Jack-9 suited in color rays from under the gun. Go heads up here to 7882 clubs. Pretty good flop for me. I've got a straight flush draw. My opponent bets $100. Given the fact that he raised from under the gun, probably he's not going to have too many 8x hands. So I play my hand fast here and check raise to $325. Back over to my opponent, who says he has ace high and gives his cards back to the dealer. We draw first blood, taking down around $175 worth of profit in this hand. Next up, no straddle, under the gun races to 75 Pocket queens for me, I 3-bet to $300. I get a cold call to my left by a player who plays fairly tight pre-flop, so I feel like he's going to have mostly pocket pairs, some Broadway suited cards, maybe some ace X hands. Back over to the initial raiser who calls as well, and we go three ways, $900 in the middle, to an ace high board. Obviously not my favorite here with an ace on the flop with pocket queens, but this doesn't mean that we're always going to be behind. My opponent's going to have some worse pocket pairs here, some suited broadway, suited connectors. I'm going to bet just like I would if I had aces, ace king, ace queen that I three bet preflop, or if I had some bluffs, I would be betting on this flop as well. I size down to around a one fourth size bet of 250 bucks. The cold caller on my left makes to call, and the under the gun player makes to fold. Turn card for diamonds. Once I three bet pre flop, get a cold call, bet this flop, and get called. I'm just going to shut this one down and check over to my opponent, hoping this one goes check, check, giving me a good idea that my pocket queens are ahead, but my opponent does not check. He announces a $300 bet. Now, a $300 bet is somewhat sizable, but for this game, for this pot, it actually isn't too big. I mean, the pot's around $1,500. He's only betting around one-fifth the size here, so I make the call. I know I'm probably not going to be good here that often, but let's see what happens on the last card. It's a 9. I check. My opponent checks back and shows pocket jacks, and that is a hand that we can beat. The ladies win this one. Profiting a decent amount in this hand, two for two so far on this session. A fun one up next, button races to 75. I call with King 10 suited and make top pair on 10 4 4. I check, and my opponent bets small on this flop, $50. I could call or I could check raise. Given the fact that my hand does need some protection versus this sizing out of position, I elect to check raise to $200. The reason that I check raise here, as I said before, my hand does need some protection and also I can get called by worse hands like pocket sevens, pocket eights. I can also get called by backdoor equity hands like jack nine of clubs or queen jack or even ace high. My opponent does make the call and the turn card is a king, now giving me top two pair. Although this is a great card for my actual hand versus my particular range that I raise here on the flop, this is actually a terrible card. So now I decide to slow down and check over to my opponent who is definitely capable of bluffing. In these kind of situations where a card favors him more than it favors me, I want to allow a player who will bluff to bluff. So I check and he does fire out a $275 bet. Now, he could have floated me on the flop, and then now is trying to bluff here on the turn. If I did have Jack-10, I'd be in a tough spot, but I've got King-10, top two pair, going to set the trap and make the call, and the river card is good, giving me a full house. It's another four. We have fours full of kings, basically the nuts on this board. We're losing to a four. We're losing to pocket tens, pocket kings, and pocket aces. A little bit unlikely, but I check over to my opponent, Hoping he fires out a big bet. Depending on the sizing, I may check raise, but I feel like a lot of the time here, he's just going to be bluffing. Some of the time, we're going to be beat, but I feel like that's very, very unlikely. Eventually, he does slide out an $800 bet. I get the count and snap call. He says, you're good. I make him show his cards. He has 6-7 offsuit for 7 high. King-10 is good. Full house. Three for three, chips being pushed in my direction, and we're up around $2,000 now 
within about an hour of our night. Feeling good, running good, and now we get dealt in a monster. Ace King offsuit. There's a race to 75. I three bet the cut off to 250 and get cold called on the button by the same player who cold called me earlier with pocket jacks when I had queens. Initial razor calls as well, three ways around $800 in the skillet to a nine, six deuce, two diamond board. Hijack player checks, we have nothing on this flop. We don't even have a backdoor diamond for a flush draw, but I decide to see bet feeling that these players are gonna be playing basically fit or fold, meaning that if they hit this board, they'll call, and if they miss, they'll just fold. I make it $475 over here on the button. The reason I bet this flop as well is that these players aren't really the battling type, meaning that they're not really going to be floating me too often. I don't expect to be check raised unless they have a monster. The button calls, early position folds. We are now heads up at a position to a good card. It's a king of diamonds, top pair, top kicker for us, but it does bring in that diamond flush draw. I feel like once he calls in the flop, he most likely has pocket pairs, maybe some diamond draws, maybe sometimes some ace high hands, but like I said, probably unlikely. I'm going to continue to bet, but not for too large of a sizing, a little bit less than half the size of the pot. Make it $525, basically targeting hands like 9x with a diamond or a pocket pair like pocket 10s with a diamond. My opponent does call 525 now over $2,300 in the middle to a board pairing six. I now have to decide, should I check or should I continue to try to squeak out some extra value? Ace King does look good on this board. We're losing to a flush and that's basically it. Don't think he's gonna have a full house. If I wanna continue to try to win big at these stakes, I gotta be willing to take a little bit of risk. And a risk here would be betting, opening up the action for him to potentially raise me. And I feel like that's fine. If I bet and he raises, I can easily fold my hand. But if I bet, maybe he gets sticky and calls with a worse hand. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen when my opponent announces a $2,300 raise. I know my hand is never good. So I look back at it and toss it into the muck. My opponent here on the left is very friendly and ends up telling me later that he had the jack high flush. He was trapping on the turn, made a raise on the river, and we do end up losing a couple thousand dollars in this hand. Moving forward about 30 minutes, I raise king queen of hearts. I get three bet by the big blind to $600. And oh yeah, we are playing with the $50 straddle. So the game has been bumped. It is now two times bigger. I decide to call this $600 re-raise with king queen suited. I've got around a $10,000 stack. And the flop comes out ace high with a king and a 10. I have a pair and a gut shot straight draw. I call a $400 bet and then check it down from here and I win against 910 suited. We then play our version of a hard rock bomb pot where somebody raises to 100, everybody calls and we all go to a flop where I make two pair with ace three and make a full house on the river winning about $500 in that hand and then we start to play the game. This is our version of the stand up game here where we can't stand up and play poker, so instead of using buttons, we use our cards on the table. If you win the hand, you can put the card on the table, which means you've won a pot, and the last person to not win a pot owes everybody at the table $100 worth of a penalty. I really like this game. It definitely adds some extra action. Well, it's me and two other players who have not won a hand yet, so I've got to get going and I have jack seven suited on the button. Under the gun, raises to 125. I wanna to try to get in there, so I make the call, small blind, big blind, and straddle call. We go a multi-way here to a flop of jack eight four with two diamonds. Small blind checks, big blind checks, under the gun checks, and now the initial raiser from the under the gun position bets out a pretty large sizing, $425 into all these players and now I have a decision to make. I've got top pair, a good hand, but he is betting into four other opponents. It's pretty strong. This particular player is very polarized here. He's basically saying he's got an over pair, maybe pocket eights, or a big draw. I don't really want to call and have other players call behind me. I feel like I could maybe even bluff on this run out versus this particular player. We could have the best hand. I got to win a pot to get my card on the table so I don't have to pay a penalty. So I decide to raise it up here. I make it $1,300. I 
It's a very interesting spot because my hand is not that strong, but I can still get called by a lot of worse hands. I can get called by straight draws that he c-bet on the flop, flush draws that we're doing decent against, and I'm also very confident that he's probably not going to be re-raising me here ever. He understands that I have to win a pot, so if he does have a value hand or if he has a flush draw or straight draw, he's just going to call hoping that I continue to bluff if I am bluffing. My opponent does put in $1,300 for a call, and the turn card doesn't help us, but it doesn't hurt us either. It's an 8. It pairs the board. My opponent checks, and we have to make a decision now. Should we continue to bet, or should we just take our jack to showdown and check this one back? I think this is a close spot. If I check and the river card's a brick and my opponent bets big, I'm going to be tempted to try to call in order to win the hand for the stand-up game. If I bet, he will still call me with his flush draws and straight draws, but what happens if he's got those aces, kings, and queens? It's a tough spot, not really sure what to do, and ultimately, I decide to down bet here on the turn, make it a little bit smaller than I did on the flop, I make it 1250 bucks. You may think that my sizing here is suspicious, and I would agree with you. Would I ever be down betting if I improved to a full house, if I had like jack eight or pocket fours or pocket eights for quads? I mean, it is possible. Maybe I would be down betting, hoping he would call with his entire range. But the reason I bet smaller here is because I'm very confident that my opponent is either going to fold or call. I just don't think he's ever going to be check raising me here in this spot because... If he did have a flush draw or a straight draw, he never wants to check raise because he would never want me to jam over top of him. And if he does have an over pair, he'll never check raise because he wants to allow me to continue to bluff if I am bluffing. Under the gun does make the call. We go to the final card, which is the nine of hearts. A big pop brewing over $5,000 in the middle. Once he checks, I'm not going to be betting anymore here with my top pair. Hoping he's got a busted straight draw or flush draw, I check back and get shown pocket kings ah damn he had one of those hands that he thought it was possible he could have we lose around $2,500 in this hand and worse yet we haven't won a hand yet for the game so we're still eligible for that $100 penalty we've got to win a hand it's coming down to crunch time 10 minutes go by I'm now heads up in the game versus the player in the blue shirt both of us have not won a hand yet I've got to make something happen I've got ace deuce of spades in the straddle the other player who hasn't won a hand limps for $50. The button play raises to $175 and the action's back over on me. With Ace Deuce suited, this could be a spot I could put in a big 3-bet squeeze given the fact that the button player is very loose aggressive, plays a lot of hands on the button. He could be raising here very wide. Going to try to take advantage of that and I make it $750. Bucks. The player in the blue shirt who needs to win a hand for the game folds so that's great but the button player the loose aggressive euro pro is in the tank and he is thinking obviously we're hoping and praying for a fold so we can take down this pot and also show our hand to win the game and not pay everyone out 100 dollars. but frustratingly enough my opponent is not going anywhere and he makes my life miserable when he min clicks back here to a $1,500 sizing. Ugh, God. Can't do much here with Ace Deuce suited. Can't really call out of position versus a four bet. So I'm just going to fold and lose another hundreds of dollars trying to win a hand. At my attempt to try to win a hand to not lose the game, I have now managed to lose around $3,500 worth of my profit. Very frustrating, but this is what makes this game, the stand-up game, so good for the game. It really opens people up. It gets them to bluff and do some weird plays. And unfortunately, I am the recipient this time of losing a lot of money trying to win a hand. Back over here to the action. I have still not won a hand. We're still playing the game. And I'm heads up now against a player in the blue shirt. You can see he has folded his cards. And it's now folded to me in the big blind with three deuce offsuit. 
<laughs> I'm definitely calling. For I've you. been trying pretty. Feel, feel I've been trying pretty hard to win this. You have. I, I definitely right. calling for him. I raised to $150 with three deuce offsuit. My opponent says he's not folding. He's gonna play a little defense for the game. The player in the blue shirt is very thankful for that. I'm hoping he folds and I just win this pot. It's not really even about the money in this game. It's only $100 per player. You just do not want to lose the stand-up game. It's a pride thing. It's an ego thing. You don't want to be the last person to not win a hand. I've already fought this far. I've lost over $3,500 trying to win a damn hand. I'm not going to give up. I raised to 150 and I'm just going to freaking blast off until I win. My opponent here in the straddle does call for $100 more and we get an ace-king-10 flop. Very good flop for three-deuce offsuit, right? Uh, No. Well, gonna stick with the plan, gonna blast off. I'm gonna try to win this damn pot, so I bet out $100. Oh! Yes. <laughs> I didn't have anything, Alex. I couldn't, I couldn't defend. <laughs> I couldn't defend for you, Alex, I'm sorry. God, I worked so hard for this. Bucks. Well, what do you do after you dust off $3,500 trying to win a hand? Of course, you get dealt in pocket aces. Where was this just 20 minutes ago? Damn, well, I raised to 150 trying to get my money back. Button calls, small blank calls, three ways to a 10 high flop. I bet 275 only the button calls turn jack. Size up to 1,000. He folds, and we went a little bit back here with aces. We all decide now to play another round of the game. We have to win a hand in order to not pay out the penalty, and I'm going to be aggressive, even more aggressive this time. I 3-bet to $800 with A6 suited over a $200 button open. My opponent makes the call over $1,600 in the middle to an ace high board. Top pair, small to medium sized kicker. I'm going to bet I make it 425 button makes the call. Turn card, 6, giving me 2 pair. This is a great spot we're playing the game. My opponent may think I'm bluffing. I'm going to bet $1,500, leaving myself with a shoving stack of $4,000 if he does call. But my opponent folds, show the hand to the table, put my card on the table, and we are not going to pay out a penalty again. This time, it was much less stressful. This has been an up and down session. Early on, I was up $2,000, and after losing a bunch of hands, I was down around $4,000. Now I've clawed all the way back to even with about an $8,000 stack, which leads in to the very last notable hand of the night. We're playing the game again. Gotta win a hand. Ace-King offsuit. I raised to 125. The button calls, and now the player in the blue shirt, who also has not won a hand yet, Three bets to $425. This player has around $2,500 in his stack. With the $50 straddle on, that's only 50 big blinds. Ace, king, it's just an easy mandatory get it all in versus the stack size. So I re-raised to around $2,600. My opponent calls. We are going to run out this board two times. Only the first board counts, though, for the game. Hopefully we can get lucky. He's probably got a pocket pair. We're going to have to hit an ace or a king. Let's see this run out. First flop comes out queen high. Turn queen. River king. Okay. Gave us top pair. We should be good there. Second board jack high. Not good. Turns a king again. We have top pair top kicker on both boards. I show my hand. And it's good. Up against pocket nines. We were flipping. We ran it twice and got lucky. Hitting both run outs with a king to win around a $5,000 pot which ends up being our last hand of the night. A swingy session ended up profiting a little over $3,000 in this 10, 25, 50 game. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you.